Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Wow, the sound is uh, interesting in here. I'm sitting in Wang Tao's memorial hall in a small water town outside of Suzhou in Zhejiang province. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, um, because I am traveling these days and I thought why not uh, make some beautiful videos from these beautiful settings. Look here, it's so cool. La la la. And I'm alone. Well, right now I'm alone, you never know. Suddenly the tourists just come running and I'm like, ah. Anyways, <laughs> so let's get started. This video, today's video, is about the differences between the Chinese universities and the Danish universities. Um, so basically, I'm of course gonna speak from my own personal experience. I have gone to the Danish University, Olbo University, and I have gone to the Chinese universities, uh, Dongbei University, Northeastern University in uh, Shenyang. I've gone to Renmin Dashue, uh, the People's University in Beijing, and also Chuanmei Dashue, Zhongguo uh, Chuanmei Dashue, the communication university in Beijing so I have a little bit of experience <laughs> um, so today we're just gonna talk about the differences between the universities in Denmark and here in China I hope you're ready so without further ado let's get started so I have come up with six differences major differences between the Danish and Chinese universities yes uh, the first thing is the study load Basically, okay, remember, I am a communication student, so of course it's different if you're a math student, a physics, or a business, da 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 da. But for me, as a communication student, I've been studying communication in uh, both China and Denmark. So for a communication student in Denmark, you have some classes, like four classes a week. No, not four classes, four days of school in the first semester uh, in a week, and then three, and then two, and then only ten weeks of um, 10 weeks of classes and then a project in the end. I don't think that's lot. For China, it's a little bit different with the study load. Basically, if you're studying a degree in Chinese, then you're gonna study all the freaking time. You're gonna have classes from morning to evening and then you're gonna make homework afterwards and during your weekends. You're gonna basically have your second home in the library, yes. Um, but if you're studying an English taught degree as I did, Again, only personal experience, I haven't been to all universities, but where I have been, I learned that if you're studying in English, then the professors, they won't care very much about what you're doing, and you have a few classes here and there, but the study load is literally like this. It's really, really tiny. So that's the difference between the Chinese and Danish universities. The study load is not big in Denmark, but in China, it's either massive if it's in Chinese or tiny if you're studying in Another, English. Another, the second major difference uh, is the canteen. So at my university in Denmark we had like a tiny canteen and you could have food there, yes, but it would be very expensive and people just didn't do it very often. Um, I always brought my own lunch and a lot of my friends also brought their own lunch. Like it's not very common to eat on campus, whereas in China that's basically what what you do because people live on campus and that's sometimes their only option but there are also tons of opportun but there are also tons of options at the Chinese campus because everyone is eating there and there are so many students so there are like many different canteens but also shops and also restaurants and restaurants around campus and the street stalls and like yeah, you can eat everything, whatever you the want. The third major difference is the accommodation. Because at the Danish university, my university anyways, and the universities I know of, um, you can't stay on campus. There are a few accommodation options besides the university, but it's not common to stay there. Um, Basically, most Danish people really like to stay in the center of town and what happened with my university was that my university was in the eastern part, which was kind of like eight kilometers out of the city center. So everyone just kind of found their own accommodation or the accommodation office. Um, what is that called? Like for the for the dormitories. The dormitories are basically spread all over town. So you might not stay close to university even though you're staying in uh, a dormitory. And dormitories are usually 
um, mostly in uh, again in my town um, they're mostly these uh, separate apartments yeah so instead of staying in one room two people you have your own little small apartment with like a room and a kitchen and a bathroom this is very common accommodation um, for uh, Danish students because we just like our privacy too much I think <laughs> and high standards, I don't know. But the uh, major difference when I came to China was just like, oh my God, like the Chinese people, they live four to six to eight people in one room for four years. Holy macaroni. And for, da uh, not for Danish students, for international students, we're living two people in one room. And again, I was like, oh my God, holy moly. Like why, why, how am I gonna survive this? Um, but I got used to it and I love my roomie now. So I'm fine with it, but Sometimes I do miss having miss miss. I miss having my own space. Um, but then again, my roomie she's doing a lot of things, and I'm doing a lot of things. So uh, very often I have the room for myself, and we have a private bathroom, the two of us. So we're very lucky. But I know a lot of foreign students um, in China they uh, have to share the the bathroom with the whole floor, and the Chinese is even worse, and no kitchen, of course. So we're lucky, but still, that's a major difference between uh, Denmark and China. The fourth major difference is that you're friends with your teachers in Denmark, um, kind of, well, not besties, you know, but like your friends, you know each other, you say hello to each other and uh, you call them by their first names. We always call the teachers their real names, whereas in China we always call them Professor something, Professor Wu and Wei and Yang and Ni Yong Yong, you know where I'm at. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's a huge difference. The funny thing though is I was surprised this time when I came back to China um, is the fact that everyone is adding their professors on WeChat and they're using their personal WeChat and I thought that was kind of weird. So like my professor here in China, he will, you know, put out a picture of his, him and his parents during a Chinese New Year and I was like, why is that on my, like, that's weird. <laughs> but maybe I'm just used to a more professional relationship, but then again, it's, well, I'm not really, because in Denmark, it's, it's just in Denmark, you're like, you're friends at the university, but you're not like making, you're not friends with your professors on Facebook and such. So the fifth difference is the length of the studies in Denmark. The bachelor degrees are usually three years, whereas in China they're usually four years or five years. Also, the masters in Denmark usually two years, whereas in China they're usually two years, uh, three years. Sorry, um, PhD is also very often longer in China. Long time to study. <laughs> And the sixth difference is that in Denmark our exams are usually be usually split between oral exams and also written exams. It's a mix of both, whereas in China most of them are written. Written, 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 always written. <laughs> there we go guys, that's the six major differences. Please comment below if you have more differences or differences from your own country to China or the opposite, you know what I mean. Um, I'm happy to hear from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon. Ling Bye.